afternoon everyone can you all hear me and uh, and see my slides at least few of you uh, can speak i request uh, someone here to unmute at least few of you can you see my slides and am i audible yes, yes. sir you are audible perfect perfect great so good afternoon once again and i will be now taking over from professor sanjeeva srivastava and we will be learning from lecture 7 onwards so another six lectures in this mcb module okay so my name is rahul purwar and i am colleague of professor sanjeev sivastava here in the department of bioscience and bioengineering okay and my email just for your information is right here purwar rahul at iitb.ac.in and my office phone number is also there okay so and just to give you little idea what we are going to learn now onwards till uh, our midsem we are going to learn in next six lectures from lecture 7 to lecture 12 so today's lecture for example will be on the viruses and their application okay next class will be on the bacteria and their application so whole idea about teaching these different classes is that not only just we will teach you virus and bacteria but we will try to ensure that you learn why we are teaching you this viruses and bacteria being an engineering graduate right because many of you may be thinking you are coming to an engineering institute and why an engineering engineering institute a bb101 should be there right so you will learn like the why we are teaching this viruses and and how as a in, as a good engineer you should find out the different type of solution based on this knowledge okay so lecture 9 would be about gene expression and its regulation similarly next class would be your basics of immunology lecture 11 will be cell communication and lecture 12 would be on 23rd of april would be about the stem cells and techniques in the healthcare okay what we are introducing uh, uh, to ensure the better learning is that every lecture except today's one except this first lecture 7 we will have quiz so quiz 1 would be in the lecture 8 schedule and this quiz 1 will be based upon the lecture 7 this one that means today's lecture class so if you see on the right hand side you will see 10 minute quiz with few mcqs based on the previous lecture so first quiz will happen on the next lecture which is in your case is scheduled on 6th of april okay so this should be very clear similarly next quiz would be on 9th april but the question will come from the previous uh, lecture which is for example bacteria class okay similarly third quiz will happen on 16th april but the question will come from the previous class okay so except today's lecture all other lectures would have at the last at the end one quiz okay so this you should remember this is something uh, we will be doing to ensure that you have learned from the previous class okay and uh, syllabus will remain the same uh, the reference book remain the same what professor sanjeeva told you campbell book same what ha you have been using so far logistics there is no change in logistics except myself who will be now teaching you from now onwards is simply a continuation of this mcv module okay so today for example we will learn about viruses and then as so on we will take care about these lectures okay so with this i will start my uh, uh, give you some more information about your tas and how you should ask questions and how we will run the classes okay so tas you have most of you are distributed in 18 different rooms correct and and these 18 rooms you have each room is assigned two tas for your help 
they are taking your tutorials. So Parijat and Lisha, for example, in the first room. Similarly, all these names are mentioned. And these slides will be uploaded to you and given to you. So you can check uh, later who is in your, who is your TA. And you can always approach them for the questions you have. The questions or comments you have or any doubts you have, you can always approach them. This is for a big help. Okay. Another help you can get from the two head TAs who are Dr. Sreya Das and Dr. Sushant Kumar. Both are these my colleagues. They will be always available for you to answer any queries. And uh, from your feedback from your past, like past one month, this is the system I thought may be useful for answering any query you have in a timely manner. So first layer, you can always talk to me during our live classes. So every other class would be the live class. And in every class, I will be live. Every class, I will be at least live to answer your questions, comment, discussion, doubts, everything. So that is your first layer. You can always talk to me. By any chance, if you ha still have more questions, you can write in the email on vb 101 mcbmodule at gmail.com. And if within 24 hours, if you do not get any response, you can approach your head TAs, Dr. Sreya Das and Dr. Sushant Kumar with your questions. If still you, your questions and doubts are not clear, you can always write a personal email to me and I will be very happy to answer your questions. Okay. So with this, I will start the class now. So uh, you can, uh, whenever you have any questions, we can take the questions at the end of the class. But raise your hand, put your queries in the chat box. Okay. So with this, I will start the class now. Today, uh, we will discuss about the viruses. And this is lecture seven. And the topic viruses we are studying as the first topic of your BB 101. And the reference book for the this is uh, chapter 19 uh, from the Campbell book. Okay. Uh, whenever I teach my students any topic, first thing I always ask why you should know about this topic right so when we are studying today about the viruses first question is why you should study viruses in your bb 101 class or as an engineering first year graduate right the question and the actually the easiest answer is that as an engineer as a good engineer you want to solve the problems right and you can make good engineering solutions for the today's world problem and if you think what is the biggest problem world facing today is the covid pandemic right and covid uh, is happening due to a virus which is also called coronavirus and this novel coronavirus disease this outbreak which is a pandemic because worldwide is happening because of viruses so we should uh, if you know about the viruses how viruses uh, what are the viruses how they look what they eat how they reproduce how they look if you know about them you can then think about better solution or you can design better solution if you know uh, in detail about the viruses right so what are the viruses viruses are microscopic organisms that exist almost everywhere on earth they can infect animals like us a human being all the different type of animals they can infect plants so that's why there are many plant diseases they can infect fungi and even bacteria and we will discuss what are the viruses that infect all these classes okay. we will also learn in this class about the diseases that are caused by the viruses and in fact we will also discuss about what are the good viruses what are the bad viruses you heard right now about covid covid 19 it's a bad virus but there are good uh, some good viruses also and we will learn about them uh, viruses generally spread very fast 
and there's no cure for a virus but vaccination can prevent them from spreading if you see this coronavirus uh, uh, pandemic there are almost all the countries and now are uh, Uh, suffering because of this disease some of course uh, you can see in this world map which is uh, we just took from who website you see majority of the countries have the virus issues some are having more and more patients and there are few which are having less individuals the corona virus if you uh, whenever you listen the radio or tv or read newspaper or online you hear this is novel corona virus that means the strain of the virus or the type of virus uh, right now which is causing pandemic is novel is a new virus however corona virus is very very old it was there earlier but it was not causing that severe issues with the human being but if you see the origin of human corona virus it is very very old you see here from mid 1960s where this virus genetically diverse corona virus natural host was the rodent then intermediate host that means from rodent it was transferred to the mammals cows in this case for example and and there was a human host but in the human it was not causing a very severe disease unlike today so corona virus is having a lot of history behind it and the current corona virus is a novel corona virus which is a very severe strain that causes a long term infections and causing infection in many many people right and similarly in mid 1960s the corona virus also came back bats bats to different species to the different human being similarly bats generally bats and rodents you will see most of the time are the natural host of the uh, corona virus okay and from these a different type of host or which are primary host it goes to the intermediate host and from intermediate host uh, it comes to the human being and current one which is causing sars cov 2 which you see on the bottom here is 2019 this is causing a worldwide problem because this strain of corona virus is novel and its infectivity is very high infectivity means uh, causing inf- causing the infection and the infection generally what you say it happens by respiratory route that's why they all tell you to use the mask to stop the infection now just to give you a little bit more background on corona uh, for example its symptoms you heard already uh, fever dry cough fatigue so i will not go in detail but there are other less common symptoms are loss of taste and smell nasal congestion that means your nose feel stuffy headache some people are also uh, having diarrhea sore throat conjunctivitis like that means conjunctivitis means in eye eyes and allergies in the eyes some severe if the disease turn from mild to severe people also feel shortness of breath loss of appetite and sometimes it if the virus is causing brain inflammation inflammation in the brain that people can even feel confused right so what to do very simple wash your hands with soap physical distancing avoid touching your face wear a mask avoid crowded area and boost your immune system like what are the tests available rapid antigen test kits are available generally you must have been hearing about real time pcr kit uh, that means the molecular biology assays there are some other assays which are which estimate certain proteins those are uh, done by elisa or clear kits and some of uh, this pcr kit i'm sure the professor sanjeeva in his molecular biology class might have told you slightly about pcr what is pcr okay and so what is the cure so cure is of course prophylactic vaccines for example covid-19 vaccines some vaccines are of different formats for example covid-19 vaccine uh, the mrna vaccine from pfizer or bio antec you must be hearing a lot in india uh, 
one company called Bharat Biotech, they made the indigenous vaccine called Covaxin. And another vaccine developed by AstraZeneca is also manufactured by Serum Institute of Pune, that is the Covishield. So Covaxin and Covishield both are approved in India and majority of the people are generally getting vaccinated by one of these and we will learn more about this vaccine in more detail during our immunology lecture where which i will also take so with this uh, a little background about the recent coronavirus let us learn what is the virus and how they look okay. viruses are infectious particles they consist of very few set of genes and those genes are packaged in a proteinaceous coat. That means the viruses are very simple microorganisms. Uh, they have very few set of genes. For example, uh, in eukaryote system, which Professor Sanjeeva told you, it's a very complex system and they have thousands and lakhs of genes in a cell. However, viruses, they are very simple uh, um, microorganisms. They have very few set of genes and those set of genes, uh, they are packaged in a protein coat. So the outer layer, what you see is the protein coat. They are much simpler in structure than even the prokaryotic cells. So you have learned in the previous classes, eukaryotic cells, then you might have learned prokaryotic cells and uh, viruses are even simpler than the prokaryotic cells. One of the things which is said about the viruses is viruses have got the borrowed life. What, what does it mean by borrowed life? That means they have borrowed the life from some uh, somebody. That, that means here they are obligate intracellular parasites. So obligate means compulsory. That means they have to live inside the host. So they cannot reproduce outside of a host cell. So they always need a host cell. For example, coronavirus, uh, SARS-CoV-19, it cannot repli uh, reproduce outside a cell. It needs a human host, which is a secondary host, or its natural host, like bats or the uh, rodents, for their reproduction. That's why viruses are inactive outside the host. They only get life when they are inside a host. So viruses are intracellular parasites and they're obligate because that means there has to be a host if virus need to survive. Virus cannot survive outside the host. They are just like inert particle when they're outside. Majority of viruses are very, very small. In fact, you can recall the bacteria as well as eukaryote or prokaryotes. Viruses are even smaller than all of these eukaryotes, prokaryotes, and fungus and any other microorganisms. If you see this uh, scale where I have shown you the tennis ball at the right hand side, if you see it in the nanometer, this is 10 to the power 8 nanometer of the tennis ball size. But when you go on the backwards, what you see that a period is almost 10 to the 6. A cancer cell, it is the size is 10 to the power 4 nanometer or 10 micron. You have bacteria, which is almost 1 micron size or 10 to the power 3 nanometer. And here are comes the viruses. Viruses are extremely small, about 100 nanometer uh, range. And here on the left, leftmost, what you are seeing a bacteria. And here on, on the extreme left, you see a virus, which actually infect the bacteria. And that's why its name is called bacteriophage. So bacteriophage are the viruses that infect bacteria. And you can see the size difference. So bacteriophage are very, very small uh, viruses. One of the major thing you have to remember, viruses lack energy metabolism, as I said in the previous slide. And that's why they are called borrowed life. They do not uh, make the energy by themselves. They need a host cell, host cell mechanisms, host cells enzyme to uh, uh, perform the metabolism. 
and to get their own energy. Not all viruses are small. Some viruses are very big as well. So if you see that in the evolution and the biology of extremely large DNA, DNA viruses, from the history you see from uh, this vaccinia virus, which is only 190 kilo base pair. And now there is a, a discovery recently for the large viruses as well, something like mimi virus, as well as other viruses, which are fairly large sizes. So not all viruses are small. Okay, so that uh, concept you should also know that uh, it's not like biases only have very small size, like 100 nanometer. There could be some large biases also. So, bio in biology, uh, we have to see a range. We cannot uh, define a very particular numbers. Okay, so uh, what we are going to discuss is are they alive? As I said in last two slides, that they outside the host, they are inert particle, but they always need a host cells. And once they are inside the host cell, they use host cell enzymes and the different mechanisms to produce energy. So inside the host cells, they are alive. Outside the host cell, they are inert particle. And uh, why some of the viruses are big? Because the genome size is big. They need a, a bigger a protein cap capsule to uh, for the packaging. How do they invade, invade the host? We are going to learn like how they enter into the host cell. You can then, uh, by analogy, you can think how coronavirus enter into the host cell as well. How do they manage to stuff their genome inside the capsid? So capsid is this protein coat which I was talking about. Uh, and this is also we are going to learn in next slides. Now there is a lot of data about the coronavirus, for example, uh, this novel coronavirus. And there are people who have uh, seen the uh, photograph of, of the SARS-CoV-19 particles uh, in the transmission electron micrograph. And here is the uh, here how they look. So this is on your left scanning electron microscope image that shows SARS-CoV-2 in yellow. And also known as 2019 uh, novel coronavirus, the virus that caused COVID-19 isolated from a patient in the US. Uh, and this virus, basically the particle are coming from the host cell, which I was talking about. This host cell is producing lots and lots of coronavirus and they will keep infecting the other cells. And uh, that's how virus replicate in very high numbers make many many copies and live happily in the host cell unless unless the drugs or the body immune system check its growth so again um, why engineers should learn uh, about viruses because engineers must uh, get us the new solution simple solution and you can only make the good solution when you know how what is the problem and how big is the problem how serious is the problem right so if you see the overview of the viral infection viruses can infect us in majority of the organs right from the brain if you start right from the brain, brain inflammation, brain inflammation in more technical words for encephalitis, it is caused by many, many viruses, including rabies, LCM virus, measles, JC virus, they all cause the brain inflammation. In fact, now there's a very new data showing that coronavirus also can cause the inflammation in the brain. And that is causing the confusion in the individuals who are coronavirus positive. If the virus is very severe, a person is severely infected, they are facing this confusion kind of issues, which is happening because of brain inflammation. So viruses can cause brain inflammation, right? N nasal uh, uh, tract, nose, and it's, it's including coronavirus, which enters into the human body by nose or the respiratory route. And other viruses that cause, causes cold are also enter into the human host by the uh, nasal tract, such as rhinoviruses, respiratory syncytial viruses. So viruses can enter into the body via the nasal route or in more technical word, you can say respiratory tract. 
okay and it causes infection eye infections are also caused by the viruses like herpes simplex virus causes eye cytomegalovirus adenovirus so i, I am not telling you all this because you must uh, memorize all of them that is not the idea idea to tell about all these uh, viruses all this terminology is that you understand what are the viruses why you as an engineer you should know the viruses so you can if you know about all these viruses how they enter into our body for example and what are the organs they cause the problem maybe some of you can think about the solution how to stop uh, for example how to stop the entry of the viruses if you know how viruses infect a cell and make it a more like factory for their own reproduction you can think what are the different ways you can stop that uh, proliferation or replication of that virus right so that's the reason you should uh, uh, think why uh, uh, we are teaching in bb101 as viruses for example okay. similar so let's uh, uh, understand a little bit history of viruses. Okay. So viruses actually for the first time, and there's a record that uh, in 1000 BC in China, a smallpox, which is caused by one of the viruses is actually recorded in 1000 BC. And this disease right now at uh, most of you may be knowing that smallpox is almost eradicated. But that time smallpox was a huge problem. And in China, to protect the people from smallpox, they developed a process called variolation. Uh, okay. So this was an endemic. So what's the endemic and pandemic? So endemic means that uh, the disease which is only confined to a certain country only. But when it, the disease goes in different continent, in different countries, that's called pandemic, which is, for example, now from China, uh, you also, I think, uh, uh, this uh, Corona uh, or COVID uh, started from there, and now it is pandemic. Um, however, this particular disease, the smallpox, it, it was endemic in China. And uh, to protect its people, they developed the process called variolation. Okay. And variolation basically what is variolation right variolation is that uh, in the smallpox a patient develop a small a small uh, uh, what you call boils on the skin and these boils have uh, this solution uh, the, and this solution which is basically the pus okay and what they did they took this boil dead crust of the boils and this they will keep this dead crust of the boys from the patient and whoever is the near uh, the individual they will vaccinate with the this dead crust and uh, the way they were vaccinating they were letting people inhale this dead crust from the smallpox lesions and what they realized that the people who are vaccinated with the with this dead crust of the smallpox patient, those vaccinated people did not develop the disease. Okay, and that uh, became uh, something like a concept of the vaccination that uh, if you take a virus coming from this dead crust of a patient, use this virus either. Um, by inhaling so healthy individuals will inhale this uh, dead crust coming from the patient or later they also develop another way of putting this virus was they will inoculate uh, the pus from the scratch of the lesion uh, scratch of the patient and put in the form forearm of a child so uh, this is a different way of vaccinating either you inhale it or you is put a put in the skin by a scratch okay and this type of vaccination was saving people from getting infection from the smallpox and this methodology this the virus as well as the vaccine methodology uh, this was developed long back in china and and that's how they stopped the endemic there 
similarly uh, about the smallpox there another uh, story coming from the, the uk where in 1717 the wife of the english ambassador to the ottoman empire they observed that local women inoculating their children against the smallpox but the smallpox was little common in other countries as well and in the 18th century edward jenner edward jenner was a very famous scientist he observed and studied that mr sarah nels who was a milkmaid who had previously caught cowpox and was subsequently found to be immune to smallpox and similar but devastating virus so uh, this is another very interesting observation i want to talk in little detail with all of you that uh, the vaccine concept this is very interesting because most of these viruses they have natural host is different so for example in covid i was telling rodents are the natural host similarly the smallpox the there is a similar virus to smallpox is called cowpox virus which in fact cow and these milkmaid for example in this case sarah nels she is a milkmaid and she was milking the cows and she got this virus uh, from the cows and she never contracted the smallpox that means if that means that sarah nels was vaccinated with the virus via milking it uh, milking the cows and she was protected right and uh, because she uh, got exposure with the cowpox virus she is protected with the smallpox virus so this was another very good observation edward jenner made and therefore what edward jenner thought that maybe he can get the cowpox material and and using this cowpox infected material which is basically the virus and he can vaccinate other individuals and if he in vaccinate other individual with cowpox virus they will not develop the disease because its natural host is cow so human will not develop disease but they will feel vaccinated they will get vaccinated and they will never contract the smallpox because there is some similarity of the cowpox and smallpox cowpox virus will uh, get uh, uh, will uh, so humans will develop the Uh, uh, develop the good immune response against the smallpox. How viruses are discovered? This is one of the experiment we will discuss uh, about the discovery of the viruses. So, in uh, the example we will take is the tobacco mosaic disease. This is the virus, tobacco mosaic virus. This basically uh, infect the leaves of the tobacco plant. if tobacco plant is infected with this virus then it feels stunted growth slow growth or retarded growth and there is a mosaic coloration to the leaves okay so growth is stunted uh, very slow and the you see a mosaic coloration of the virus and how to know that this is a viral disease at the first place how the scientists came to know that viruses are causing this disease so here is a very beautiful experiment to prove that uh, the tobacco mosaic disease is happening due to viruses okay so the experiment is as follows here first step is you extract the sap from tobacco plant with tobacco mosaic disease so they took the uh, a tobacco mosaic plant where the leaves were infected with the tobacco mosaic virus okay they make the extract and this extract uh, was passed through a filter to to a porcelain filter what you see here passed the sap through a porcelain filter known to trap bacteria but by that time bacteria was known so they passed the this entire sap from the filter which can stop the bacteria okay then they took this uh, uh, final uh, filtered sap and they rubbed on the healthy tobacco leaves so rubbed filtered sap on the healthy tobacco leaves what they observed that these healthy leaves became infected that suggested to the scientists the observation here is that yes leaves are getting infected from the sap which can even uh, 
which is passed through the filter that can stop bacteria. That means something is smaller than that, which is passing through that filter is causing the uh, causing the disease. And that's the time uh, they have made this hypothesis that a particle is smaller than the bacteria cause the tobacco disease. So once the virus was discovered that it is smaller than the bacteria using that previous experiment, then people started uh, discovering how the virus looked like, what is the exactly the virus uh, is. So they were looking for the virus genome. So virus has the genome, which is you have uh, learned that genes as well as the what is the other component beyond the genes or beyond the nuclear material this is the protein shell and what is this protein cell it is called caspid capsid and the capsid is the protein shell that encloses the viral genome and this protein shell can have various different type of a structure which we will learn in the next slides okay so capsid is protein shell that encloses the viral genome and capsids is built from protein sub subunits called capsomeres. A capsid can have variety of different structure. Okay? For example, a viral structure can be cylindrical. So here you see in the core, you have the genome and the here genome is RNA and it is surrounded by a protein shell that is the capsomere or the capsid. Similarly, the different pyramidical shape or the adenoviruses, they are different shapes, shape. And then you have the circular, you have the very different, very complex uh, structure of the protein shell of the bacteriophages. So bacteriophages, so bacteriophages are the viruses that infect the bacteria and they can infect and set in motion a genetic takeover of the bacteria such as Escherichia coli or E. coli. So here on in this uh, micrograph or the uh, transmission electron micrograph uh, image, what you see is that the yellow is the E. coli and on the E. coli sitting the this virus, which is the bacteriophage. What you see in this virus, you see a capsid, the outer layer, which is in the greenish thing. And inside what is there is the, uh, uh, is the genome material, for example, in this case, RNA. Okay. So if you see the uh, bacteriophage again in the electron micrograph, uh, what you see in the left, so they have this complex capsid structure which have a head region. In the head, mostly you have the genome material and then you have the tail region. And using this tail, they they attach to the uh, their bacteria with a host cell, for example, E. coli. So if the, in the right hand side, you see one E. coli bacteria and there are several bacteriophages are attached on the bacteria surface and surface most of the see the nature's beauty that all the uh, viruses they have similar mechanisms of entry into the host cell they're all entering by attaching by the tail reason head reason is separate right head reason on the other side but tail reason they are binding to the bacteria and soon you will uh, uh, what will happen is that via tail reason, they will transfer their genetic material into the host cells, into the E. coli. And once the, uh, their genome material goes into the E. coli, that genomic material will integrate into the E. coli uh, host cell, and then more and more bacteriophages will be produced. So basically, the capsid, uh, a capsid will remain outside, genome material will be sent inside the host cell, and uh, virus will take over the entire machinery of the E. coli for its own purpose. So now you can, by analogy, you can think whenever a person is sick with the viral disease, what happens? The majority of the time, one feels very, very tired. Why one feels tired? Because viruses, they are, they, 
once they inside the host cells host cells can't do anything else except whatever the virus use them for and virus use them for producing more and more virus copies and that takes all the energy of the cell and the host feel very tired so you imagine if some of you might have been uh, sometimes sick in your lifetime so far where by the viral infection even simple flu type of virus influenza type of viruses and what you feel is the majority of the time being very very lethargic very very tired the reason is that virus is using your cells for the uh, for the purpose of their uh, reproduction and there are many important animal viruses and those can be classified based on the genome and genome material for example there are viruses which are double stranded dna there, there are viruses which could be even single stranded dna uh, unlike the human which mostly have the mostly but in fact all of us have the double stranded dna as genetic material but viruses can have even rna as genetic material and in fact that can be double stranded rna as well as single stranded rna just to summarize my previous slide uh, genome of viruses again can be either dna or rna viruses dna uh, viruses can be divided either in single stranded viruses for example parvo parvovirus or double stranded uh, dna viruses like chickenpox similarly rna viruses can be single stranded or double stranded basically what we want to tell or what we want to convey is that viruses genome unlike the human being can be either dna or rna or within dna it can be single stranded or double stranded etc so what are the different type of viruses viruses can be adenovirus adeno word came from the human adenoids adenoid tonsils so because these viruses are first time isolated from the human adenoid tonsils that's why the name came from and uh, there are two genera avian adenovirus avian avia comes from the avian so like birds because and then um, mastodinoviruses the mastodino word came from the mammalian so where they infect both humans and animals okay adenoviruses are a frequent cause of acute upper respiratory tract infection that is cold so that's why you know tonsils tonsils are present in the upper respiratory tract and majority of the adenovirus they, they causes cold okay and they also cause a number of other type of infections 5 to 10% of upper respiratory infections in children and many infections in adult they happen due to the adenoviruses they widespread in nature they infect in birds that's why the uh, that avian uh, avian adenovirus they uh, they cause infection in birds like bird flu and many mammals as well as in the men other viruses category is retroviruses the term retrovirus means it behaves backwards from the original way that we all think about genetics which is the dna makes rna rna makes protein but retroviruses have a rna genome retro means backward generally you will see uh, you have might have uh, learned in the past that everybody has genome as dna and dna makes the rna and rna makes the protein that is the central dogma of molecular biology we will also learn but this is a general phenomena that dna makes rna rna makes protein but in retroviruses it behaves backwards that means here rna is the genome and rna makes the dna and that makes again further rna to make protein so that little bit backward okay they have enveloped viruses possessing a rna genome and a replica uh, via the dna intermediate most of the retroviruses they infect vertebrates but as a group they have been identified in virtually all organisms including invertebrates so retroviruses are evolutionary very successful design because the reason is as i mentioned in previous slides very briefly that because they have rna as genome 
RNA is very unstable, but it mutates very fast. Mutates means this, uh, their genetic changes happen very fast, and that gives them chance to survive longer because host cells cannot kill them fast. So, so for example, vaccination, you might have heard, and during this pandemic time, people are talking that even a person who is vaccinated can get the COVID-19 once again, right? However, now you remember your childhood where you got vaccinated from typhoid, pneumonia, uh, and the BCG, uh, MMR, all those vaccinations you got as a childhood, but you never developed the uh, you never develop the, those disease in your lifetime because once vaccinated, your body is protecting you from those diseases. But now think about COVID-19 or another retroviruses where vaccines are not so successful because these viruses continue getting mutated and because of very high rate of mutation in RNA viruses and RNA viruses also COVID is RNA viruses the vaccines whatever you you are getting maybe that strain of vaccine is not protecting you with the new strain that are coming so all the times in the news there you might have a following they are saying a new strain of the viruses are coming some sometimes they say africa is strain sometimes the brazilian strain sometimes new strain which is developing in india there's always new discovery of new strain and there's always a fear that whether this new strain, whatever the uh, vaccine they have made, will they be successful or will they protect us with the new strain? So, uh, and that is the reason these viruses, evolutionarily very smart because they are continuously changing their envelope, continuing changing their genome and existing host cell by its own inert or innate properties or by vaccination, unable to protect and able to kill that virus, and virus remain very, very successful. So just an example about the RNA virus. So here is a, such as a retrovirus, such as HIV. This uh, HIV actually, if you see on the right, it has got the genome, right? It's genome, but you see the RNA, two identical strands of the RNA in the red. Okay, and as I said, the viruses have very simple structure. They have the RNA as genome, few set of genes, and uh, because of their few set of genes, they have very few proteins, and they have the shell or the envelope, uh, capsid uh, protein envelope. So here you have this capsid, the proteinaceous uh, uh, envelope. And very few viruses, they also have an additional envelope uh, on the, which surrounds the capsid. So majority have RNA and the capsid proteinaceous shell, but there are few viruses which also have an additional viral envelope. And this RNA viruses, they keep few enzymes, uh, one egg, one particular enzyme is called reverse transcriptase. The role of this reverse transcriptase enzyme is that convert or that uh, that translate uh, that basically transcribe this RNA molecule into the DNA whenever this virus goes into the host cell. Because host cell is, let's say, for in case of HIV, the host cell is the human cell. Right, uh, and the human cell has the genome as DNA. So to integrate into the DNA, this RNA of this uh, HIV virus first need to transcribe into a DNA, and for that purpose, this uh, RNA uh, will be first transcribed into the DNA by the enzyme which is coming from the virus itself but virus derived reverse transcriptase enzyme. So reverse transcriptase enzyme of the virus, this will transcribe this RNA into the DNA. And once the DNA is made, this DNA will go and integrate into the host cell, okay? So how the viruses enter into the host cell? 
So virus enter into the host cells. For example, what they do, they first attach to the uh, cell, which I have shown you in the previous slides in E. coli. So bacteriophages were binding to the E. coli by the tail reason. <coughs> then there's uncoating and only the genome enter into the cell and the capsid and envelope remain outside. So this is one way of doing it. Another is virus uh, enters into the eukaryotic cells, <coughs> sorry, entry into the nucleus, and then inside the cell it gets uncoated. And the third way is it attaches to the nuclear membrane and injects the genome into the nucleus. So this uh, way is faster, which I have shown you in the previous slide. But there are different ways virus can enter into the eukaryotic cell. It can uncoat, send its naked genome, or enter into the nucleus and then uncoat, or attach to the nuclear membrane and inject the genome into the nucleus. How virus replicate? So now take an example of double stranded DNA as genome. Let's say this is the virus on your top left. Uh, the blue one and here is the in the yellow there's your host cell okay blue is the virus and now virus is entering into the host cell so entry and uncoating so first uncoated cell and what it does it remove the capsid layer and then only send the genome and genome is double standard dna so a double standard DNA, what it will happen? It will make it will make more copies. It replicate uh, by integrating into the uh, host cell DNA. So now imagine this a host cell DNA somewhere here integrated. Now it will replicate. It will make more and more viral genome copy. Also from this DNA, what will make RNA and RNA? RNA will make the protein and protein is again capsid. And the capsid and the double standard DNA, they will make more new viral copies. So that's how virus replicate. Uh, once again, I will repeat, virus come close to the host cells, uncoat itself. At the nuclear membrane of the host cells, it will uh, inject the uh, double standard DNA because this is a double standard RNA. If imagine now it was this RNA virus, then RNA will come, RNA will first transcribe into DNA and then DNA will integrate into the host cell. Once the new uh, viral DNA copies are made, at the same time, we will make the viral capsid protein via the DNA to RNA, RNA to this capsid protein. Both capsid protein and the double standard DNA, they will make, merge together and they will make new viral copies. And these new viral copies will go outside the cell and will infect more and more cells. And this cycle will continue. So one virus enter into the cell and thousands of viral copies are made. Okay. So basically viruses, uh, they use the factory uh, or host cells very uneconomically they do not care about how much energy they use basically if you see on the right hand side this is a very good model so on the x-axis we have plotted on whom money is spent on the y-axis whose money is spent and here who so for example if your money is spent on yourself right so you economize and seek highest wealth but here the host energy and host enzymes are consumed for yourself, I mean, viruses are using someone else's money, someone else, like host cell. So what they are doing, they, they just need very few copies generally to uh, infect other cells. But they are making thousands and millions of copies, not caring about the host cell. So they are not economizing, but seeking the highest wealth. Okay? So viruses, they, they consume a lot of energy from the host cells and to make their cop viral copies and this is again i will repeat this is the reason why in viral diseases the most of the thing you feel is the a lot of tiredness so in the previous slide i have shown you how the double standard rna uh, dna virus replicate and now this is the most complex scenario where 
what is the reproductive cycle of an enveloped RNA virus. So you see here, there's a virus, double-stranded RNA. Here, it's a single-stranded RNA is shown. And then you have the capsid. And then you have this virus enveloped. So I told you, if there are a few viruses that have enveloped also. And this envelope is made up of glycoproteins. So this is an RNA virus with envelope. So first step is glycoproteins on the viral envelope, they bind to the specific receptor molecules. So for example, in HIV case, in HIV virus, they have the glycoprotein called GP140 or GP20. Those proteins, they bind to certain very specific receptors. You don't need to remember, but those receptors are CD4 and CCR5. Uh, especially the CD4 that binds to the glycoprotein and then let HIV come inside the cell. So if, uh, okay, so these glycoprotein on the viral envelope, they bind to very specific receptor. Once they bind, then capsid and viral genome enter in the cell. So envelope left outside and only thing comes inside the cell is capsid and the viral genome. Then this capsid is digested, the protein is digested by cellular enzymes, and this releases the viral genome inside the cell. The viral genome, which you see in the rat, this function as a template for the synthesis of complementary RNA strands. So now you are seeing this is complementary RNA strand is getting synthesized on this viral gene genome, which acting as a template using a viral RNA polymerase. This is very important because most of these RNA viruses, they carry their RNA polymerase because they need it in the host cell. Okay. So using RNA polymerase, which is viral RNA polymerase, they will uh, synthesize new copies. Okay. Now you have two situations here. Now one act as a genome of the virus. Another um, uh, template will also make the RNA. So number four, so new copies of viral genome RNA are made using complementary RNA strand as template. And then complementary RNA strands also function as mRNA, so messenger RNA, which is translated into both capsid protein in the cytosol and glycoproteins for the viral envelope okay, in the endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus. So they will make the, uh, these protein called capsid and the capsid and the RNA genome, they will combine together and they will now vesicles, they transport the enveloped glycoproteins to the plasma membrane, which is, this is the outer layer. And then a capsid assembles around each viral genome molecule and each new virus bursts from the cell and it envelops studied with viral glycoprotein uh, embedded in membrane derived from the host cell. So generally the, the envelope is coming from the, if you see the yellow color that shows this is a host derived, that means host cells uh, plasma membrane. So envelope is coming from the host cell. Let's learn a few viruses that cause the human and plant diseases. For example, poliovirus, poliomyelitis, which is infantile paralysis, which is caused by poliovirus. Poliovirus invades the nervous system and causing paralysis in one out of every 200 children. Polio remains endemic still in three countries. Afghanistan, Nigeria, and Pakistan is still, uh, there are kids who get polio. Otherwise, because of polio vaccination, polio is generally eradicated from the planet. Plants also uh, get virally infected. More than 2,000 types of viral diseases of plants, they are known. Common symptoms of viral uh, infection that includes spots on leaves and fruits, stunted growth of the plant, and damaged flower and damaged roots. So you can see if the plants are having like these kind of mosaic or these kind of discoloration, you realize that these fruits and plants are not healthy. They might be virally infected. 
there are many other diseases of the viruses like influenza, HIV, herpes simplex virus, viruses can cause cancer, viruses cause the respiratory infections, herpes zoster that cause chicken pox, hepatitis B or hepatitis C that cause liver cirrhosis or liver cancer and there are several other viruses that causes human diseases. Similar to COVID-19, uh, another type of uh, the virus that causes flu-like symptoms is influenza virus. And there are different types of influenza viruses, influenza A, B, C. And very recently, you have heard H1N1 or H1N5. Those were in a pandemic also, right? And so in, there are many actually pandemic uh, happened due to influenza virus. Again, you realize this virus, again, is complicated virus. It's an RNA genome. The genome is surrounded in a protein called capsid. And then you have the envelope, right? Very uh, similar to the coronavirus. Causes very much sim uh, similar type of symptom also, like flu-like symptom. In the 20th century, the three influenza pandemic occurred. Spanish influenza in 1918. Asian influenza in 1958. Hong Kong influenza in 1968, and each resulting in more than a million deaths. So a new type of influenza A, which is H1N1, again, these are different type of strains. So H1N1, H1N5, similarly COVID, these are different proteins that get mutated or they have different version of the protein. And that's why they are called different strains. So a strain means uh, a differently mutated protein. So for example, there are two proteins here, H and N, and the H protein and N protein, they're differently mutated in different versions. So H1, N1, or H1, N5. So that's how the names are given. A new type of influenza A, H1, N1, this pandemic happened in June 2009. Larger outbreaks known as pandemics are very less frequent, but it does happen. And this virus genome, this consists of eight single standard RNA molecule. So here you see uh, all the eight in the figure as well. And each RNA is individually wrapped in the protein shell, which is capsid. And then these capsid and all they are uh, in the membrane envelope and over the envelope, you see certain protein called glycoprotein. And glycoprotein role is to help this virus enter into the cell. Just to give you more flavor of, of what is strain and what is this H and N, so different subtypes of influenza virus. So these different subtypes are mainly decided by different protein, as I said. So H protein is called heme glutenin. This, this protein helps in binding this uh, cell to the host cells. Another protein called neuraminidase. Neuraminidase is N, hydrolyzes a carbohydrate building block from the newly formed virion as well as host. And both of these proteins, they evolve very rapidly because of the mutation in the R, because this RNA virus, a lot of mutation happens. And when they evolve, they make the new protein and that's the reason their name changes, their subtype name changes, and that's why this new strain comes up with H1N1 or H1N5. Let us learn a little bit more in detail about one of the viruses, HIV, and how it infects the human, and what is this virus, how it looks like. Okay, so it belongs to the group of retroviruses called lentiviruses. And retro, as you can imagine immediately, this is a uh, genome is RNA. So it also carries two copies of the RNA genome. And like other viruses, it has its own very few set of genes. And because very few set of genes, it, it only carries a uh, few copies of the essential enzymes, which it needs for its activity. Okay. It has got the envelope like influenza virus and in on the envelope it has glycoproteins like gp120 or gp41 okay and what is the role of glycoprotein glycoprotein helps the virus to enter into the cells so how these cells 
how this envelope helps the virus to enter into the cell because this GP120 of the envelope protein, it binds to the some protein called CD4 or CCR4 or CXCR4 of the host cell. Okay, so that you have to remember for the host cells has uh, CD4, CCR5 or CXCR4 and a virus has GP120 and that's how with this interaction of uh, the GP120 with the host cell protein like CD4, CCR5, CXCR4, the cell, uh, the virus goes inside the cell. Okay. And the virus has another protein called GP41 that helps the virus to fuse with the plasma membrane, PM means plasma membrane of the host cell. Okay, so this uh, think about how virus goes enters into the host cell. Now you know that uh, HIV can only enter into the cell if GP120 protein has this interacting partner. That means, and those interacting partners are like CD4, CCR5, or CXCR4. These are the proteins. If you don't remember or can't remember the name of these proteins, just remember the concept that viral envelope protein, GP120, this will bind to its own partner, which is another protein on the host cell. Okay, that concept you remember. That concept tells us that if the partner is missing, the GP120 will not have its interacting partner. And that means virus cannot enter the host cell. So cells that have the interacting partner of GP120, they will be infected. And that concept of cell tropism. If a host cells lack that interacting partner, of the GP120, such as the CD4, CCR5, or CHCR4 protein on the host cell, they will not be infected with HIV. That tells us that if anybody who is having certain mutation on these proteins, CD4, CCR5, or CHCR4, GP120 cannot bind to them, and those hosts will never get HIV infection. Okay, so HIV. It does not infect those people who have these kind of certain mutations on these protein. However, uh, you will also find out, or if you go in more detail, you will learn there are people who have uh, uh, who can't handle even a small amount of HIV. That means they have so weak immune system that once they are exposed to HIV, disease develop them very fast. But there are people who will never develop HIV despite having very HIV load in the blood. So even if they're having a lot of HIV virus in the blood, but they will never develop AIDS. They will never feel immune compromised. But there are people who have a small amount of HIV in the blood and they immediately develop AIDS. So in the previous slide, I said genetics of the host play a very important role on the severity of the uh, HIV induced AIDS disease. But in this slide, I want to just tell you briefly about the concept which I was telling you in the previous slide that any virus that has very small genome and carries very essential genes for its own function. For remaining function is always used host cell. For example, HIV similarly, that has only very few set of gene or cluster of the genes, but remaining function, it depends on the host cell. Don't, you do not need to remember the gene name or the gene cluster name, but at least remember that these genes or genes cluster, they are very few and they only do very essential function required for the HIV development or HIV reproduction. But for other metabolism, other energy source, HIV or other viruses, they use the host uh, genes and host mechanisms, host pathways and host energy metabolism. What is the common route by which HIV infect? and disease progresses after the HIV entry. 
Generally, HIV is spread by transfer of body fluids like blood, mucosal fluid, especially uh, from pregnant mother to her baby. HIV mainly infects cells that express CD4 along with these co-receptor. There is free virus, that means virus coming out of the cell and there's a lot of free virus in the blood, semen, vaginal fluid and mother's milk. And unlike other infection, HIV infection seems rarely to lead to a protective immune response. That means that once a person is infected with HIV, there is no 100% HIV elimination. Generally, whenever any bacteria, any virus, any fungus, any pathogen enter into our body, our immune system completely eliminated completely kills those infectious particles. But in case of HIV or in case of few viruses, there's never complete elimination of the viruses. Why? Because these HIV virus, they are again RNA virus. They mutate very fast. They keep making new, uh, new viral copies, new, vi new virus subtypes, and body is unable to completely eliminate it because immune system can't recognize them as the foreign because they complete and continuously mutating very fast. If we quantify the course of infection of HIV over time, so if you have on the x-axis the time, let's say in the beginning four to eight weeks and on the y-axis you can plot in the red here if you see the red a red line red line represents the infectious virus or virus in the plasma plasma means blood so in the blood imagine you want to quantify the uh, hiv virus in the blood so you just see the red uh, line so in the beginning in four to eight weeks or four to uh, six weeks let us say that virus is continuously very very high in number in the blood once our immune system let's say immune system with antibodies or the other immune system they also picks up let you can follow the yellow line for example yellow or blue when you have these protective molecule antibody or the other immune cells the virus load comes down and within eight weeks your blood would have very little um, virus left and this up as long as our immune system work, virus load in the plasma is very low. And this is called asymptomatic phase, which can last from two years to 12 years based on the health status or immune status of the patient. But at any given time, if the immune status of the patient go bad, which you see the blue line or the yellow line or they are going downwards and that's the time the red line which represents the virus load it is going upwards indicating that when the immune system goes weak virus numbers are increasing and two to three years virus in keep increasing very fast immune system is failing and the time when the immune system is very very weak that time is called immune compromise they got acquired immune deficiency syndrome or the patient called AIDS patient as many of you might have heard that uh, HIV causes AIDS HIV itself is not killing the person HIV virus is not killing what is killing the patient is its immune cells deficiency, especially the immune cell, which is called CD4 positive T cell, which is the host for the HIV virus. The number of uh, these cells remain very, very low because of the virus, uh, virus infectivity, the these cells die. And once the generally in the beginning, there are thousands to 1200 cells per microliter of the blood, but once these cells deplete and they go below 100, that's the time cause the AIDS. And because the patients do not have these cells and these cells are required for 
all different kind of immune function the patient feel immune compromise and die because of opportunistic infection whatever the infection the patient is exposed to they will not be able to handle it because they do not have these immune cells that protect them and the patient dies so as i said that patients do not die because of hiv they die because of their immune system is failed immune system is broken and at that time when the immune system is destroyed completely whatever the infection patients uh, get for example if the patient is in developing country like india they may get the mycobacterium tuberculosis mtb um, which cause the tuberculosis they may get uh, if they are in the western country where fungal infections are very common they can get candida infection or the pneumocystis or the lung infection so depending on the type of infection a uh, patient get exposed to they can die or these patients their immune system is broken they can even develop cancer and die so at last just for the your uh, curiosity i am telling this uh, taking this slide you don't need to again memorize it but you will hear that there are people who are very sensitive to hiv infection but there are others who are not sensitive at all who are uh, who do not get hiv infection no matter what so that so the genetics persons the host genetics play a role in the sensitivity to hiv infection and then scientists found so many different type of genes that helps the host to protect themselves uh, and this is just by chance actually there are certain mutation that occurs they for example if ccr5 genes again i am not asking you to memorize these things but just understand or appreciate that how genetics play a role in the sensitivity to hiv infection for example just to uh, for your knowledge ccr5 if there is a mutation here there is let's say delta 32 it's a recessive uh, professor sanjeeva told you i already what is recessive what is dominant so if there is a recessive uh, gene here then it prevent infection so because there is no uh, no expression of the ccr5 and if ccr5 is not there then the person do not get the hiv infection and if you do not get hiv infection then there is no aids right similarly there are uh, genes which in accelerate aids that means there are people who are very sensitive to aids for example ccl5 if there is a 1.1c the dominant uh, uh, gene is there this accelerate aids so it it brings the it destroy the immune system faster and the person develop aids faster quicker at last we can learn very briefly what how now you can protect or how the hiv infection is treated so given now uh, we know that how virus look like how virus is produced how virus enter into the cell any of these processes can be targeted correct so similarly the scientists and clinicians they have developed the drugs that block either hiv reproduction or hiv entry or the production or the vesicle formation and um, virus assembly and when the virus uh, virus genome and capsids are there so let us go from the beginning so virus enter the cell one can always stop the entry so you know now gp120 protein bind to the cd4 so fusion if here happens with the plasma membrane can we so there are drugs that prevent or protect uh, stop this fusion then virus is here now with the uh, there is a virus rna is coming rna need to be uh, transcribed into the dna can we stop this process so people have this inhibition of reverse transcriptase enzyme and the nucleoside analogs and non nucleoside analogs they interrupt the transcription of the viral rna into viral cdna similarly there's protease inhibitor that can so proteases are the enzyme that 
cleaves the protein. So capsid protein is important here, right? So you can digest the uh, capsid protein. Virus assembly is required to uh, for the viral um, viral um, uh, particle uh, formation. One can stop the virus assembly. So these are all the different targets one can think of to uh, stop the virus growth. As we always mention that prevention is better than cure. So how to control HIV infection? So besides therapeutics, prevention and education are one way in which the spread of HIV and AIDS can be controlled. Similarly, now you know that now we know that coronavirus, for example, it comes via via the respiratory route. Because we know it comes via respiratory route, we can use the mask. And by simply using mask, you can prevent the corona infection and one can prevent the, this pandemic. Similarly, for HIV, now we know how it spreads. We can stop or just by behavioral change or by taking certain steps, one can control it. Right? So challenges in HIV treatment or the similar challenges we are facing in corona treatment are because these viruses, they accumulate many mutations in the course of infection and drug treatment or even vaccine development becomes very, very challenging because there are immediately development of new strains. You are listening in corona case, for example, you are hearing about the African strain, new virus strain. Similarly, in the HIV case, there are always outgrowth of the drug resistant variants and the infection becomes uncontrolled. And these are the cases that lead to the pandemic. Okay. So with this, I will stop it here. If you have any questions, we can discuss the questions uh, either via chat box or we can always, uh, you can send me emails or we can have uh, in the next class, we can have 15 to 20 minute session for discussion. And, and if you have a questions right now, I will ask my team to unmute yourself. You can raise your hand and we can discuss the uh, your question so first you raise the hand and then my colleagues will let you uh, come in and speak if you have any questions we'll be very happy to answer hello sir uh, am i audible yes you are you are what's your name uh, ronak okay ronak tell me uh, sir as you said that uh, the milkmaid case where uh, she developed um, um, immunity, immunity against uh, against the smallpox uh, yeah. as she had uh, um, encountered the cowpox. Uh, cowpox. So can that be a case uh, with uh, corona? Suppose uh, if yes. uh, someone has uh, previously caught uh, any uh, virus from the corona family, yes. uh, would he or she be immune to the novel coronavirus? Yes, very good question, actually, Ronak. Very, very good question. So this is the question about the vaccine concept. So concept of the vaccine is that once your immune system is trained, that means once you saw the virus or any pathogen, whether it's corona, in ideal case, okay, in ideal world, once you saw the pathogen or once you encountered the pathogen, immune system get training, and then you are never contracting that disease because your immune system immediately kill if you are re-exposed. That's why all of you may be remembering that you got vaccine as a kid or as an infant or as a kid for many different type of uh, bacteria or pathogens, for example, MMR vaccine or typhoid vaccines. Once you take these vaccines, you never develop the disease throughout your life. Okay. But and same was true in case of smallpox or cowpox. Cowpox and smallpox, because there's a cross reactivity between these two pathogens. They are very similar. They are there from the same family. That's why the milkmaid, milkmaid was uh, contracted with a cowpox, but protected with the smallpox. So this is called cross reactivity thing that, uh, okay. And now your question was about the coronavirus or, for example, take example of HIV virus. These viruses are uh, RNA viruses. They mutate very fast. So for the first time when they come to your body or to come to the patient's body, they are having certain genome. Okay. And 
body learn uh, from them that okay this is this is how they look like at this moment they are like this body develop the immune system but the time immune system develop and start killing the virus virus produce more copies and in those more copies there are different mutations occurred already so now virus is different so this cycle virus use virus keep making its new um, new envelope, new mutations, new look, and therefore immune system or the vaccines can unable to kill it completely. Okay, so coronavirus you might be hearing in your online newspaper or the TV or radio that uh, despite people are getting vaccinated, some of them are still contracting the disease. Right? You might have heard that government is saying that even if you are vaccinated. Please use all the precautions because you may contract once again. The reason is the reason is that these viruses are RNA origin. They are continuously changing. You are hearing that sometimes it's called African strain, sometimes Brazilian strain, New Zealand strain, or the even now new Indian strains are coming. Correct. So, so the coronavirus is the reverse. Uh, uh, reverse virus. Retrovirus. Yeah, retrovirus. Yeah, retrovirus. Yes, sir. I also had uh, one more doubt. Sure, sure. Um, what what harm is the virus actually causing? Because it has entered the cell, it used the energy of the cell to make more of itself. Yeah. What harm did it cause? Uh, it is only causing uh, the energy depletion of the individual. Okay. Uh, if, if, if so, uh, ideally, the individual should uh, feel. Uh, tired all the time but he or she should not die Correct. what is okay. what is the sure. reason for death sure so whenever any foreign uh, pathogen comes including coronavirus of course virus is using our cell as a factory for its reproduction at the same time our body is trying to fight against the virus and and to fight a body secretes lot of inflammatory molecule because body takes it as a danger because something dangerous come in my body and body is trying to kill it to kill it body is secreting lot of inflammatory molecules and one of them is let us say interleukin 6 and this interleukin 6 or other molecule including tnf alpha or il1 if you go a little bit more in detail just for your simplicity, you can think that body react uh, by secreting lot of cytokines, lot of proteins that ultimately want to kill the virus, but they don't kill the virus. But at the same time, they create inflammation. They create the inflammatory environment. And that inflammatory environment, which is swelling, for example, inflammation, yes. that causing the organ failure also. For example, if there is a lot of inflammation in the lung, because lung is the primary site for the coronavirus, then lung get inflamed. And that's why people feel short breath. They are saying, right, that you might have heard, they say that people can't breathe properly, right? Oxygen levels goes down because their lungs are inflamed. Okay, this is one. If the infection is uncontrolled, it goes even up to the brain, that people start getting inflammation in the brain. So they feel confused in the delirium. That situation is when the brain inflammation happens. Many people are getting diarrhea because they are gastrointestinal tract. It's a no novel coronavirus. It's not only just infecting, it's the primary site. It's moving from primary sites to different sites. So those are the problems. Okay. You understood the problems? Yes. Sir. Okay. Sure. Anybody else has any other question? Sir, am I audible? Yes, you are. You are. Yeah, sir. I, I had one doubt in the one of the slides where you mentioned that they're T even, like bacteriophage T4. Like, what does the T stand for there? Like, why are there different kinds of I see. So that's just take it as a name. So bacteriophage T4. So don't worry about the this so much terminology. You can just think as a bacteriophage for your simplicity. Like only T4, like bacteriophage can be T2 or T6 or those kinds of things or like mostly yeah, just T4? Yeah. yeah, no, there are other uh, T's also, but just for the simplicity, you just think uh, the 
so here the concept i wanted to tell is that uh, viruses can infect not only just the human viruses can infect bacteria plants as well as human so i took all the examples of one one back to viruses and like i had one more doubt like in, when you mentioned that uh, there can also be single stranded dna uh, viruses but i thought that a single stranded dna was kind of unstable because uh, those base pairs tend to like uh, uh, like pair up right like at and gc so like how do they manage to remain stable like in the environment and all like right so as this is also a very good question because uh, more unstable they are more harm they create okay because uh, especially now think about the rna viruses rna viruses are very very labile very they can't even stay outside uh, for even an hour for example hiv hardly can live for 10 20 minutes corona people are telling for hour or two it can live hardly outside surfaces for certain surfaces it might live a little longer so however the reason why they are even dangerous because one thing is that rna is very unstable and whenever they reproduce they cause a lot of mutations however dna viruses are not that highly uh, mutating they are very stable compared to the rna viruses so dna viruses are stable that's why majority of the viral infections which are coming from the dna for chicken pox or small pox we could still eradicate those diseases by a proper vaccination So, so if you see the smallpox vaccination that almost eradicated polio from at least our country right or majority of the developed countries or many developing countries also they could get rid of the smallpox because vaccine work dna is still stable rna viruses on the other hand is the biggest problem because of the mutation issues and in that case for example hiv we still do not know what is that good hiv vaccine because we could never develop similarly corona for example we have these two vaccines but you may be hearing all the time those stories about the vaccine failure as well so rna is a big problem is unstable and because of those mutations it's very hard to get those uh, vaccine or, or to uh, to get rid of this uh, virus sir so what is the ultimate cure in uh, in the case of rna viruses there is no ulti, ulti, ultimate cure so if i have shown you this slide for example of the hiv this is a very unique slide actually if you just focus on this red graph okay so virus if you start right from the beginning at point 0 for example virus come and contact to your body then virus load goes up at the top correct the the our body try to fight it so within 4 5 weeks it develops some kind of good immune system good fighting mechanism once it develops the good fighting mechanisms the virus load starts coming down right but if you notice here a very important point it is not coming down to zero right it is still little bit virus is still there why because whenever this virus is replicating our body is able to kill majority of it is still some of it is still remaining and that is the reason why uh, why uh, the uh, this is very difficult to uh, kill the virus rna virus any other question uh, sir am i audible yes you are uh sir regarding when we were talking about that tobacco, tobacco mosaic virus and uh, scientists had uh, separated the sap and filtered it and their conclusion was that since the filter uh, uh filters the bacteria the particle must be smaller than the smaller than bacteria how are we, how were they not sure that it's just a smaller bacteria okay so at uh, that time and uh, their understanding was that bacteria is generally a micron size okay so that was their understanding it could be smaller bacteria also and they did not call it actually that virus also experiment they simply uh, said that something which is smaller than the bacteria that is causing the disease name virus was given later okay 
but that's the time whenever they so hypothesis what they generated if you see the hypothesis in 1890 what they, they did not write this is a virus they simply write a particle is smaller than bacteria caused the disease okay so a virus name came later but this was one of the experiment they did that um, and for discovered this ultimately the virus any other question or comment uh, hello sir yes no, sir uh, i wanted to ask uh, uh, do we regard a virus as a, a living organism or a non living yeah so that uh, i said in multiple slide in the beginning that uh, yes. a virus has this borrowed life so yes. you can argue from both ways uh, you can argue by good logic that yes viruses are inert particle because when they are outside they are just like inert they don't have life but at the same time you can also argue from the other side of the bench and very scientifically you can argue yes they have life because once you put them in a host cell they can reproduce yes so a virus you can uh, basically called inert particle by few and also called virus has life but they say it has borrowed life okay and sir uh, when we call uh, that the virus has an activity now that uh, if we uh, now put it in a host cell that it will not uh, reproduce and it's dead now actually yeah so uh, now the dead for example is inert i uh, so mm. when i say inert that means uh, so it, it depends on the type of viruses for example hiv virus is very labile because very very uh, like heat sensitive if it comes outside the cell or outside its host cell it hardly lives i don't exactly remember the minutes or hours but you can check on the google and uh, same is true with the corona virus people are some people are claiming that at certain temperature it can stay for 3 hours uh, active but if it is beyond 3 hours even then you touch it nothing happens so it all depends on the type of viruses how long they can remain active in a outside the host cell okay so does it happen that their genome get destroyed after some time or like yeah kind of genome becomes inactive because for the because they are rna viruses right so they are uh, rna to remain active for the or their infectivity should be there right so mm-hmm. if for example corona virus if you walk just walk by with the corona patient you don't get infected you have to at least uh, inhale directly at certain amount of the viruses you don't get infected just by passing by so if you get exposed to someone who is having corona does not mean that you immediately get the disease you have to talk to him or that person uh, very close to you and then you should inhale the virus or you are in some somewhere which is trapped place and there lot of the time that person was inhaling and exhaling so the in the environment there's very high burden of the virus then only one get infected so outdoor the spaces are absolutely safe right so outdoor if you are walking and no matter how many corona patients are walking there if it is very open space you are not going to get infected there's very hard chance to you to get infected okay sir just last question that uh, can we predict uh, what mutation will happen in a virus i mean no in the uh, next generation yeah so uh, mutations are not site specific these yes. mutations are random mutations okay and these random mutation you cannot predict as such there are people are developing algorithm there are very sophisticated tools people are using to predict what kind of mutation will happen for example next year so that is actually done every year who does it for the influenza vaccine so influenza vaccine is If some of you may be knowing that this is flu vaccine it is given every year and every year there is a different type of vaccine given and how the uh, company decide what kind of vaccine will come because who and certain organization they have this predictive tool they work around the clock to find out which strain next year or next two years will come and they predict and then they give this cocktail of the strain to the companies now this is the predictive strains 
and so that they can prepare those vaccines. However, in Corona case, so nobody can predict with 100% efficiency, but I am very sure that in coming years, people may get uh, these kind of uh, predictive tools to predict the mutations. Okay, sir. Thank you. So if there are no more questions, then we will stop here. Okay. And uh, enjoy this class. We will upload it and uh, we will. So for every second class would be the only uh, the recorded class. And I will be there for 10, 20 minutes to answer your questions. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.